Well, we are now officially 100 days away from the Summer Olympics. The opening ceremony will be live here on Channel 3. And as anticipation is building, and it is building, training hits the home stretch now for the athletes. Liz McLaughlin joins us live from the canoe and kayak trials in North Carolina, a place where Team USA is coming into focus. Boy, Liz, these athletes have been waiting a long time, haven't they? Absolutely, Jim. I mean, this is their lifelong dream, and we've gotten quite the Olympic preview here at the Canoe and Kayak Slalom Trials. They actually just turned off the white water. We did have the course raging for you guys, um, but it just ended. Very exciting, though. All of the athletes just paddled their hearts out, chasing their Olympic dreams, and Team USA is getting bigger every day. Mascots, lights, and Olympic rings mark a milestone on the road to Tokyo as the countdown clock hits 100 days to the Summer Games. It's going to be special to get everyone together to celebrate something in sports and in the world since we've all been through these rough, rough 15 months or so. But the global crisis is still ongoing. Japan now facing a resurgence of cases, forcing the Olympic torch relay off public streets in Osaka today. Just the latest course correction in the prolonged journey to the Tokyo Olympics. To have that same energy for a whole another year, you know, it was really challenging. For some of the youngest members of Team USA, the delay meant an opportunity. This extra year has given me time to get stronger, um, get psyched for the games. New faces and new sports at this year's games. Skateboarding, surfing, karate and sport climbing at the Olympics for the first time. I can't wait for more people to be introduced to climbing as it's on this world stage. A stage with a mostly virtual audience with only Japanese fans allowed in person. Another blow to the budget of what's on track to be the most expensive Olympics ever. But organizers and athletes are determined to succeed. And I'm like, can I do it again? Can I be this good? And can I repeat what I did last Olympics? And I feel like that's what motivates me. Anxious for Olympic glory as the finish line nears. A young woman you just saw in that story, Evie Liebfarth, just 17 years old. She got on Team USA today. She's living her Olympic dreams, and it's something that she's wanted her whole life. She said even in a kindergarten class, she wrote on an assignment that she had a goal to be in the Olympics one day. And here she is before she's even graduating from high school doing just that. Can't say I did that much in high school. <laughs> From Charlotte, <laughs> North Carolina, I'm Liz McLaughlin. Jim and Shara, back to you guys. Hey, Liz, before you get away now, let me ask you this question. Um, no international spectators allowed at these Olympic Games. For Americans who bought tickets to go over there and view these games, what do you think happens to that? Right after they made that announcement, I actually talked to a mega fan that lives in Texas. They've been to every Olympics over the past four decades or so. And uh, they were obviously disappointed. But, you know, they looked on the bright side. They said, well, I'll get to watch every event now because I'll just be watching it from my TV. The big issue seems to be that they're, uh, all these ticket holders aren't sure how or when they're going to get those refunds. And, in fact, they might not get yeah. a full refund. Um, this person invested maybe $10,000 in tickets, and those ticket sellers aren't giving back those fees. That's about 20%. A lot of money, Jim. <laughs> 